You can criticize it one way, criticize it another. But no one must shake the foundation. It becomes an earthquake. Something that you can't alter, you can't alter at all. Suppose you want to convert it into a religious, Hindu religious state. Answer is no. What is supreme is neither the judge, neither the Supreme Court nor the Parliament. What is supreme is the Constitution. Law, etc., takes second place. Yeah. Yeah, it may be according to law, but is it just? On the 50th year of the basic structure doctrine that requires the court to review and restrict parliament's powers to amend the constitution's foundational principles, the Indian Express spoke to veteran senior advocate Pali Nariman. The doctrine was evolved by the Supreme Court in the 1973 landmark ruling in Keshavananda Bharti v. State of Kerala, which said that the basic structure of the constitution cannot be amended by the parliament. On the 50th anniversary of the Keshwananda Bharati ruling, uh, we speak with none other than Fali Nariman, who was an additional Solicitor General at that time and has a blow by blow account of the case from Sirbai, as he says. Uh, let's understand more about what the doctrine means today and what relevance it continues to have. 50 years of the basic structure doctrine. Does it surprise you that we still, uh, the court still applies this doctrine? and? It, it still it continues to exist. No, no, not at all. On the contrary, if it didn't exist, we, we would have a constitution by today which you wouldn't be able to recognize as a democratic constitution. You see, the, it has been a face-saving formula which only with, with these three words, basic structure doctrine, has been a face-saving formula for upholding the constitution as it was intended to be. Because you must remember the preamble, because always remember that in a constitutional amendment, you must see if you are trying to breach the preamble, because the preamble mentions what you want to do. You want to provide justice, equality, fraternity, and so on, and democracy yeah. in a democratic republic. Now, does it remain democratic? if it is factually not democratic. But when you say it is to protect the democratic order of our constitution, yes. there is a view in the government that this is actually uh, violating the supremacy of the parliament. Uh, how do you see that? Yeah, you see the supremacy of parliament is very important. You are right, absolutely correct. But then, in a party system, an all-party, one-party parliament is not democratic. But if the government or through the court were to relook or revisit this basic chapter, makes doctrine. no difference. It, they will come to the same conclusion. Because, it, because to my mind, I mean, anybody who is reasonable, anybody who is reasonable I would come to the same conclusion. And I, I, I do believe that uh, I still have faith in the, in the, in the judges. It doesn't matter how they are appointed, why they are appointed sometimes rightly, sometimes wrongly, etc., etc. But, but it's, a, it's, it's a matter of human temperament because you, you don't like to see injustice. What you think is injustice, therefore, doesn't appeal to you. That, that's a very basic thought amongst all the people. Therefore, you will find among, among judges also, you, you will find that that, that that thread goes. And that's why the word justice is the first word in the preamble. Remember, it is a very, very overarching thing and it governs our whole constitution. So when you find some injustice, you must try to see how you can interfere, how you can interfere. Because if there is injustice, that's very important. Law, etc., takes second place. Yeah. Yeah, it may be according to law, but is it just? And that's where the constitution comes in. Right now, before the Supreme Court, we have this bunch of cases which will have to be tested against the basic structure doctrine, whether that is the amendments, the Citizenship Act, or uh, Article 370, uh, all of these cases. You see, they are, they are all capable of being corrected, right? even 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 in, in favor of the government. I, mean, I, I don't have any qualm about it. But but I, I don't see any, at least I hope not, in the near future, 
the basic structure doctrine, whether by with, with the 15 judges or 17 judges or the whole court, will have, will have any difference, will make any difference. I have full confidence in the judiciary. I still have a great confidence in the judiciary. I may not like one or two judgments. I may criticize the judgment, but ultimately I believe the court is the greatest savior of our liberties. And that's why Article 32 is so important. I, I want to take you back to 73. Uh, yeah. um, in the Keshwananda ruling, you see that some of the anxiety that the court has um, is coming from what happened in 1930s Germany. Uh, is there a correlation with that time, that those anxieties and what we have right now? Yes, but, and that is revealed not so much by our judgment, but by the Constitutional Court of Germany's judgment you will find that there is a constitutional court judgment which upholds this principle because there they, 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 they had certain basic laws as they call them. It is the same thing as foundation, basic structure, basic laws which you can't alter. You see, something that you can't alter, you can't alter at all because you have to call a new constituent assembly to call that. And that is impossible in our country because every Indian today and there are so many of them, the world's largest population has two opinions on every subject. <laughs> so it's impossible to find, to have a, today a constitution, a new constitution of any sort drafted by anybody and accepted by anyone. So that, that, therefore, it's our constitution which keeps us all together, quite frankly. In these 50 years, has there been a time or a case that you can recall where the court missed the bus, that they could have been... Yeah, I'm, I'm sure there could be, yeah, there, there would be, there would be, but, but you must remember there are sometimes judges who are like bulldogs, they'll hold you and they won't let go. What the court is most concerned with, and that's that because that it concerns them also, is that we are the final interpreters of the constitution. Mm -hmm. And if you go against Anything to do with judicial review, yeah. we will set our face against it. Mm -hmm. And if that remains, then I see no hesitation mm -hmm. in saying that basic structure will also remain. Uh, like you <coughs> told us earlier, if you could recall that uh, Justice Chandrachud, uh, you know, coming to the majority in Indira Gandhi in the election case, not because he believed in, uh, yeah. but, but it was more because he wanted to follow up judicial about precedent. About judicial precedent, and I've always admired that. That's the correct thing to do. You have to admire. You can't stick to your own stupid view, which you, which you one, one had talked about earlier. And, uh, and that, that really changed everything. It was, it was not so much the Khanna verdict in, in uh, Keshavananda, but the Chandrachud, Matthew, etc. verdict in in Rajana, which cemented the doctrine of, of a basic church. It actually cemented it for all time. And if you see the 39th Amendment, how ghastly it was. I mean, that was it is a monstrous. They called it a monstrous amendment. And it was monstrous because it said if it was a, the, the election of a prime minister can never be <laughs> upset by any court at any time, virtually, which was absurd. For you know those like me born much after yes, uh, you yes. know, the emergency yes, and yes, uh, all yes. of this, what is the basic structure of the constitution for you? The basic structure is what ultimately the judges for the time being consider to be the foundation of the constitution. And it's not who is supreme. You see, this is the wrong question. Of course, parliament is supreme. There's no difficulty. So is the court also supreme. But who is superior, supreme even as regards them, and that's the constitution is supreme. It's not any group of individuals. It's a document that is supreme. That's put on the highest pedestal. That, that's, that's a very important thing which most, most people miss by saying that yeah. parliament is supreme because we are all elected and judges are not elected. That's a usual argument that is put. That, that, that makes no sense at all. What is supreme is neither the judge, neither the Supreme Court nor the Parliament. What is supreme is the Constitution. 
and therefore it has you want to interpret it. And fortunately, all sane judges, I mean, uh, uh, God willing, they are all sane and they all retire at, six, at 65. That's why they retire at 65. So, they, 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 by and large, we, we, I, I see no hazard to the Constitution as framed. But going forward, what tenets of the Constitution, what basic features do you see being tested? You see, first is parliamentary democracy. Suppose you want to convert it into a religious, Hindu religious state. Answer is no. I mean, obvious, obvious. I mean, these are obvious things. But, but nobody wants to convert it. I don't see, I don't blame the, I don't say the government wants to convert it. I'm just saying that these are possible <coughs> views. One of the, perhaps the primary reason why we've had 50 <coughs> continuing years of this doctrine in use is perhaps because the court has used it so sparingly. That's right, that's my point. And I'm very glad they have used it sparingly. You can't just say whatever you don't like is, is contrary to, no. <coughs> Parliament is entitled to change the constitution. In fact, the, the main case says so. You can change even fundamental rights, no, no doubt about it. But how you do it, when you do it, why you do it, it all becomes relevant. Now when the vice president or the law minister say that the basic structure doctrine stands on very shaky legs because it's so vague and amorphous and judge. Let them introduce whatever they want to introduce and we'll see whether it's a shaky leg or firm leg. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's where the Supreme Court metal will come in, we'll be able to judge well, well, what the Supreme Court judges will do. Let's see. And I have f full confidence in that they will never uh, permit that doctrine to be watered down. In a given case, they may uphold the constitutional amendment, like they upheld the, the 103rd constitutional amendment, yeah. which could, and two judges or deferred three, yeah. etc. Uh, these things go on. You can criticize it one way, criticize it another. But no one must shake the foundation <coughs> like an earthquake. It becomes an earthquake. Why was why has it continued? Because Parliament, in its wisdom, has amended, uh, uh, proposed, and passed a constitutional amendment on the 359, which is the emergency clause in our constitution. And that emergency clause says that every article in the constitution, including fundamental in, uh, in the fundamental rights chapter, can be suspended during a period of national or internal emergency, expressly. They amended it to provide that you cannot suspend even in an emergency. Article 20 expressly says incriminating statements cannot be used against the accused. And Article 21, which is most important, that life and liberty cannot be taken away except according to procedure established by law. And procedure established by law now means not only procedure but even substantive law. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, Thank cheerio. You so much. Thank you.